Welcome back to The Chem Doctor, and uh, this is the second video in the series on uh, gases, and uh, what we're going to do now is work a problem that is from one of the four empirical laws, and the four empirical laws, these would be the, the gas laws that were uh, determined by experimentation, and um, like I said, there are four of them, so uh, we've got Boyle's Law and Charles' Law and uh, Guy Luzak's law and Avogadro's law, and this is one of the four. So um, let's let's look at the problem and um, see if we can figure out how we determine which law this is, what formula we use, and then we'll solve the problem. So um, the issue goes like this: so a balloon is filled to a volume with uh, 600 milliliters at uh, 20 degrees C and it's sealed alright so I'm gonna go ahead and um, draw a picture of a balloon here alright and uh, I highly recommend drawing pictures uh, for these kinds of problems so you can keep track of what's going on alright now the fact that we sealed the balloon right here this word means that uh, we have trapped a certain number of uh, particles um, within this container and more than likely the moles are going to remain constant as we go through this problem and that's an important piece of information all right and uh, let's see our initial volume uh, is equal to 600 milliliters and they tell us also that um, the initial temperature T1 um, is 20 degrees uh, centigrade or Celsius all right um, <clears throat> now, second sentence, the balloon is then cooled to minus 173 degrees centigrade at constant pressure. All right, so this is an important issue as well. Um, inside the balloon, I'm also going to um, write down P for pressure to remind myself that this value is going to also be held constant from uh, one set of conditions to the next. So uh, let's go ahead and write or draw another balloon all right and uh, in this case I'm gonna draw a smaller balloon because I've already recognized the fact that um, the temperature here is going to be reduced so let's see here T2 is going to be equal to minus 173 degrees centigrade and they are asking us to calculate uh, the new volume, all right, the new volume. So V2 is what we're solving for. The moles and the pressure are the things that are constant. All right, now, you can see, actually, if you've done a little bit of studying uh, in gases already, you kept up with, uh, with, it, with your class, that this is most likely going to be uh, Charles' law. All right, and if that's not immediately obvious, that's fine. How do we figure it out? All right, so what I'm going to do to figure that out is I'm going to write down the uh, ideal gas law, which is PV is equal to NRT. And what I'm going to do now with this is I'm going to walk through the equation. I'm going to indicate the things that are being held constant by putting um, an arrow and an asterisk above the things that are constant. So we know that the moles and the pressure, so this is a constant, the pressure is constant, the moles are constant, and then we have the gas constant R, which is also constant. And uh, now what we're going to do is go ahead and solve the equation to get the variables on one side uh, and um, the constants on the other side. So when we rearrange this equation, we're going to get V over T is equal to NR over P. Okay, where I'll put a circle around the constants, and you can see that the variable is V over T. All right, and Charles' law describes to us how the volume of a gas is directly dependent on the temperature. So mathematically, I can write this this way. 
so the volume is directly related or or, um, or dependent directly on what the temperature of the gas is so um, uh, and, le and let me say that more specifically. So the volume of a gas is directly proportional uh, to the absolute temperature. Absolute temperature. Absolute temperature in Kelvin. All right. So what that means, we can we can build a little cheat sheet over here. So what that means is that if if uh, if the absolute temperature of a gas was to double in Kelvin then the volume has to do the same thing. In other words, the volume would also has to have to double. So um, for a Charles Law gas, whatever the magnitude change is in the volume or the temperature, then the other variable has to undergo the same kind of change. So in this case, this part of my cheat sheet is showing that if the volume increases by some magnitude, then the temperature also had to, to, to uh, change by uh, the same in magnitude. We can draw the other half of the cheat sheet so if the volume was decreasing by by some uh, factor then that the temperature also uh, will ch be changing uh, in in the same sort of magnitude all right now getting back to our problem then you can see that we're going to have one of these equations one of these equations for for each state so in other words for the initial state V1 over T1, this is equal to NR over P. For the second state, we have V2 over T2 is also equal to the same constant quantity, NR over P. So we can set these two equations equal to one another. We can say V1 over T1 is equal to nr over p which is equal to v2 over t2 now remember your algebra since a is equal to b which is equal to c then a is equal to c so the the classic charles law equation is v1 over t1 is equal to V2 over T2. So now we found the equation that we need to solve the problem. They, and what they want to know in this is what the V2 is going to be. All right. So let's go ahead. The, the one thing that I highly recommend is that you never jam numbers uh, into an equation that you've not actually completely solved for the variable of interest. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. This may seem like a lot of work, but the bottom line is that if you're willing to do it, then the likelihood that you're going to make a mistake is pretty slim. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is flip my equation around so that I have the variable that I want <clears throat> on the correct side, which is the left. We always solve algebraic equations left to right. So I've got my V2 over here on the left. Now, I need to get rid of the T2 um, because I want my variable V2 to be completely by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply uh, our equation here by T2 over 1 on both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. So you can see now that the T2s cancel out on this side. And <clears throat> the final equation is going to be V2 so we have our variable completely isolated on one side of the equation times V1 times T2 over T1. And now we're ready to solve the problem. Now, one more detail. You can see that we were given the temperature in degrees centigrade and you can never, ever, ever, ever plug in degrees centigrade into a gas problem. We need to be like I said up here, we need to be in absolute temperature in order to solve these problems. So the conversion for this to find Kelvin, Kelvin is equal to whatever the degrees centigrade or Celsius is plus 273. All right. So we need to calculate the Kelvin for T1 and the Kelvin for T2. So the Kelvin for T1 is going to be equal to 20 degrees C 
plus 273, which is equal to 293 Kelvin. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in up here. This is going to be 293 Kelvin. All right, and the other value, the Kelvin for that will be minus 173 plus 273, or 100 Kelvin, 100 Kelvin degrees. So let's go ahead and write that in up here. So this is going to be 100 Kelvin. And now we can actually go ahead and plug in numbers. So V1, 600 mils. And we can leave this in milliliters because when you look at your equation, you can see that the R value, the R constant that has the following value, but the main point I want to be here, in fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and even change the color, are the units. You see the units are liters, atmospheres, divided by mole times K. So if you're using the R constant in, an, in a problem where you're using actually PV is equal to NRT, where you have to put R into the equation, then you can see you must be using liters for the volume. You have to be in atmospheres for your pressure. The temperature units, which I just got done saying anyway, have to be in Kelvin, and you have to be in moles for the units of particles. But since R is not in an empirical gas law equation, we don't have to change the volume units to liters. We can leave them in milliliters. T2 is 100 Kelvin. And we're going to be dividing by T1, which is 293 Kelvin. Now you can see that the units of Kelvin nicely cancel out. And we have successfully solved for the units of volume, which are milliliters. Notice that I went through all of that. I did it out loud on the video. But this is the kind of thought process I also do when I'm working these problems out on a piece of paper. I'm making sure that I've actually solved for the units of, of the parameter that I want before I actually crunch the numbers. And when, when we go ahead and uh, do the algebra, we get 204.7 milliliters. All right, now I want to look at this number, and I just want to rationalize very quickly what should have happened. So we go back to the original condition, and I see that our gas was at 600 milliliters and 20 degrees centigrade. We cooled the gas, so we, we reduced the kinetic energy of the gas, but we maintained constant pressure. The only way that that could happen is through a volume reduction. We would have needed to change the volume by making it smaller. That's the only way that you could maintain constant pressure in this system. So the only way to do that was by reducing the volume because we had reduced the temperature, remember? So you go back to the cheat sheet, here we are. Whoops. We're in the bottom scenario here, so we reduced the temperature, we had to reduce the volume. All right, with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the video.